everybody. It's so bright, it's so vibrant, it's so full of joy, so full of challenge, so full of hope every single year. And I think in the 10th year, Peter and the artists have really excelled themselves. As we're going through this kind of orgy of, uh, of bigotry at the moment uh, for the last two years, this is a, a bright light which shines out. Camden has a long tradition as a radical borough. And it's fitting then that we celebrate the 10th year of Loudest Whispers. My name is Peter Herbert, the curator manager of the Arts Project, founded Loudest Whispers at a time when the identity of LGBT people was closer to a type of whisper not heard very loudly by many at the time. In 2009, we started with the work of 24 LGBT artists. In 2019, we present 47 artists, ranging in age from a non agenarian to a couple of 19-year-olds. It's very rare to see an exhibition dedicated to the LGBTQ. Mm -hmm plus community. I mean, if you look at all the biggest museums in London, you don't really see that. You don't, And it's also rare to see art which is about the LGBT plus community or anything that has to do with that world and the struggles that some people go through or the joys that some people go through. And it's very rare to see art around that subject or it being represented. I'm not a painter. I make things out of other things. I mean, the present piece that I've got is cardboard boxes from the street, you know, and um, and quotes from mostly lesbian feminist writers, because there's some of the, the their writing has been something that's inspired me all all through from when I first became a feminist. I think for me it's very important that that lesbians identify with other women in terms of the oppression that, that all women um, experience. You know, I mean it's everything from gentle mutilation, um, violence in marriage, violence on the street, um, and I mean, as a, as a woman, I've experienced those things myself, not, not all of them, but I mean, we're so far from equality. Exposed to not the kind of same extreme reality that yeah. people of age have experienced, but I've also gone through my own experiences, and I'm bringing kind of a contemporary, modern view yeah. of like what it is to be gay, what it is to be a product of like other people fighting and working towards that, and not having to be closeted or in myself or hidden about anything, and just I'm completely open and open-minded to anything, and I always have been, and it's kind of like that's what's been paved for me. I'm described in the the blurb, the sort of official write-up, as a non a nonagenarian, otherwise ninety years old or plus. <laughs> I've lived through a whole long period, you know, of history of uh, the uh, situation for um, uh, gay people um, dating back to the fifties when I was a young, young man, actually. And uh, since then, there's been such a change. Um, but the, cha the change in the understanding of um, and, and uh, acceptance of gay people as being another aspect of ordinary life, 
um, but that wasn't always the case. And then, and then since I was a little boy, little boy, maybe five or six years old or something like that, that I was not the same as, as other people, other little boys and things like that. So yes, it is, it's quite difficult, it can be quite difficult, certainly all those many years ago, we're talking about half a century plus ago, um, to um, come to terms with these things, because the world around you, you realise is hostile to you and nobody, you don't, you, Imagine you're the only unusual and different person in the world. She lift her skirts in a key going high and knocked that case of beer. A frontiersman wrote him one day and stole her heart away. Um, we have this great uh, literary tradition, artistic tradition, and we have a very, very diverse multicultural community. Loudest Whispers is an important part of our trust and we hope that it continues to flourish for decades more. Yesterday, when I was young, so many lovely songs were waiting to be sung. So many... I know you're asking me to say, say, please, please, please don't go away. London is very different from where I come from and in regards to the arts and there's a lot more opportunity and just it's a very different environment to be in. Back home there's not a lot of it and there's not just stuff like this exhibition is not really doesn't really exist and mm -hmm. so coming here it's very overwhelming but it's very it's very beautiful. <laughs> Uh, I'm from South Africa. I came to London about 25 years ago. Uh, I loved it so much that I thought I've got to stay. When I, when I came to London, um, or the UK, I just felt really, really safe. And that was a very new experience for me. Um, new in the sense that um, where I'm from, it's a very conservative country. And as a gay man, I felt very repressed and very frightened and, and scared. And, <clears throat> and I guess um, that's the first thing I felt, this amount of freedom I could have here. and and be myself, really. And, and, and I think um, coming from such a uh, conservative background and very dogmatic and, and, um, and very suppressed, you, you grow up with lots of fears and anxieties, which can cause a lot of mental health problems. And in my art, um, my art became sort of my art therapy to express all these emotions and feelings which I don't always had the vocabulary for to express. In society in general, it's kind of, it's something that's still outside of the norm and by giving like a whole exhibition to you like know, the whole society. category, it's like giving that some visibility. Yeah, and it gives people who are part of the community hope and they can see they are being represented and that they are understood mm -hmm. and that there are other people out there that go through the same things and that you can come to doing great things even if you have a lot of struggles and problems and people throw crap at you all the time mm -hmm. but there's people who go through it and you're going to make it out alive. This foolish notion Take a straw man, baby But I'm showing you the door